Hey guys, it's Phil coming back at you with another video. Today we're going to be going over practice questions. That is right. I've not done it in a while, and I know a lot of people have been wanting me to release another practice questions video. So if that's you, we're going to be going over some more practice questions on how to break them down, navigate them, and get your confidence level on how to be able to walk into the exam, do the same, and kick it in the chest. And 33 people have done that since my last upload two weeks ago. So I'm super duper excited because every single time that somebody tells me that they pass, it just it's, it just blows my mind because I've been doing a lot of reflecting on like how far everything has come, you know, because a couple of people have asked me like, where did it all start? Or like, what keeps you going after so long? So I've went back to some of my older videos and looked and saw like, whoa, a lot of things have changed. A lot of people have passed since then and a lot of things have grown. And I'd recommend you guys doing the same, man. Because I feel like this profession can oftentimes take a lot of time from us or we may not feel like we're progressing in the way that we thought. So going back and navigating that process is super duper important. But let's get into the 33 people that have passed their exams and they are as follows. We have Shaka H. Hope J, Lady J, Cassandra H, Laura L, Carolyn M, Jenny K, Jamie G, Nimu B, Jessica B, Evelyn T, Gabby D, Colleen A, Michelle R, Andrea R, Courtney J, Johanna P, Rabi A, Katrina W, Lisette T, Vivian B, Rosa R, Gladys A, Marie A, Matt C, Renee V, Jessica P, Claudia R, Marcy S, Andrew S, Jarlene C, Maria G, and Lee C H. Ah! I'm so excited, man, because that is so mind blowing to me because I really, really appreciate every single person that is repping and rocking with me, utilizing my study groups, utilizing my videos, getting into the individual tutoring sessions and building themselves up and pushing past of where they did not think that they could go. And if you passed your exam and you want me to share your name as well, send me an email at berda24 at gmail.com. And if you're sitting here watching this and going, Phil, the study materials I have aren't really working for me. I don't feel like I'm getting the confidence level that I need or this is lacking over here, or I don't think I can do this, reach out to me and join the Sunday study groups. And they are the best way and easiest way to connect with me as well as supplement the stuff that you currently have or if the materials you're not, you're utilizing aren't working for you and you're more of an auditory and visual person, hop up in those. Those are every single Sunday starting at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And I don't really give an end time anymore because they often range from three to four hours and we end when we end. Um, and there's a question and answer segment after each of those where you can directly interact with me, process about what you're going through or things that you're struggling with. And we can come up to a solution that can best fit your needs. And if you're like, Phil, I can't really get to those live ones. Every single study session that I do is recorded. So if you have to leave early from the group or if you can't attend live, you can still benefit from them. And the next ones that are coming up are as follows 89 DSM 5 children 816 acronym and practice questions so if you're watching this video and you still don't understand like how to break down the acronym or you're looking at some old videos that I've done around practice questions and you're like I don't really know how to apply this join that study group because that's going to go through each level of the acronym tell you how to apply it when to apply it and what would be best to apply it. and it doesn't apply to every single question so if you're trying to do that and you feel like it's not working for you it's not going to really work out. It's going to set you up for failure or if you don't really understand how to apply it and you're trying to do it on your own, that would be the study group to supplement and give you the information on how to do that. 823, defense mechanisms and 830, community interventions. The link to register for those will be in the description or you can send me an email at berda24 at gmail.com for information regarding those. And if you missed my two previous one day courses and you want to come on that next one day course it is going to be on august 29th and it's going to be from 11 to 7 p.m eastern time and again that's kind of just like a framework as well because the last one i said it was only going to be from my i think 11 to 5 and we end up doing 11 to 7 30 or 11 to 8 so i don't really stop hard and fast on when i say it's going to i just want to make sure that we get as much information out to you and make sure that you get into the best possible position of being able to pass the exam. That's the most comprehensive thing that you can get. 
when working with me besides like an individual tutoring session and the link to register for that will be in the description below as well or you can send me an email at berda24 at gmail.com to register for that and I want to get it out to you guys as early as I possibly can because I know some people are like Phil I wanted to register for it or if you can't attend the live one then you can purchase a recording of the previous one day courses that I've done as well so there's an a lot of and a ton of ways to still interact with the things that I do or how to help out in that process. And for those that don't know, Audible has agreed to sponsor both my YouTube and my podcast. And if you want to support me as well as support them, go to my Audible affiliate link at audibletrial.com slash fill in the gap. Sign up for the 30-day free trial. It allows for you to get a free book. And for those that are asking, Phil, can I find stuff from you on Audible? Not at this time. I'm not really an author and I haven't really sat down to like write a book or anything. The Audible trial link is just a way for you to support me, get some self-care materials, and then operate in that way. And if you're like, Phil, what is Audible? Audible is an easy way to listen to books on the go. So if you're busy just like me and you don't really have a whole lot of time, but you still want to progress in some way, shape, or form and get information, Audible is an easy way to do that. And if you want to support me as well as support them, Go to my Audible affiliate link at audibletrial.com slash fill in the gaps. Sign up for the 30-day free trial. It allows for you to get a free book. And if you're like, Phil, I want to do that, but I don't really know what book to get. There are a couple that I would recommend, and each of them have different lessons within them. And I implement a lot of the lessons that I've learned from the books that I've read. And the ones that I would recommend at this time are as follows. Outliers, The Boy Who Was Raised as a Dog, just Mercy, and The Alchemist. And from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate all the support that you guys show me. It's amazing. A lot of you have already signed up for that, and it blows my mind. And words can't even describe how much I appreciate every single person that is repping and rocking with me and enabling me to be able to do and help you guys in the best way that I know how. And before I get into the questions, there's something that I've been getting a lot of emails about is man, I've been getting a lot of questions wrong on the practice exams, or maybe I pass this practice exam, and I'm not really sure if I'm ready for the, the actual exam. So my biggest recommendation is do not let the little things destroy the big picture of what you've been doing. Don't let one question, don't let one practice exam. Always when you're looking at practice exams, don't focus on whether I passed or failed. Focus on how did it feel with utilizing the process and technique and the routine that you were doing to get that score. Because the only thing that you can bring in with you in the exam is yourself and what you've been doing to prepare yourself for those questions in front of you. So yes, you could walk in and pass the practice exam and then walk into the real exam and fail. Or you can fail the practice exam and walk in and pass and vice versa in multiple different options. But do not let something that you feel you're doing incorrect impact your ability to perform in the actual exam. Because the only thing that can dictate whether you pass or fail is that actual exam. A lot of times I get emails like, Phil, I don't think I can handle this. Or I, people are in the study group saying like, Phil, I'm not even really sure if what I'm doing, what I'm supposed to be doing. And it's like, it is because you decided in your mind that it works for you. And if you are doing something, and you're like, my confidence level is not there. Then it, you may need to, to reach out or sit yourself down and say, what am I doing incorrect? Am I adding to the questions? Am I second guessing myself? Am I telling myself that I can't do it? And then when I pick the right answer, I change it on myself. So then I'm beating myself up for doing a tendency that I, if I was more mindful of, I may not do it. And that's where you just kind of have to sit with yourself and say, what do I need to do with and for my situation to set up my situation to look for myself? So do not, not, do not let something that you do not know, do not let one question that you get incorrect or multiple questions that you get incorrect. Because on the real exam, you can get a ton of them wrong. You can get 44 to 54 wrong. So don't let one question, one practice exam, one material, one prep program, one situation over here take away from your focus of being able to operate and walk into your gift because everyone is uniquely talented and gifted. And if you focus and continue trying and going over what you're doing, and even if you're not getting the answers correct at first, not really memorizing the answers, but what are the changes that I have to make in the techniques to allow for me to be able to walk into the exam and feel confident and comfortable? And I know a lot of people are like, yo, do people actually pass this exam? Or, whoa, I've never really met someone that's failed the exam. So now that I failed the exam, that I feel alone in this situation. And you're not alone. A lot of people have failed this exam. 
A lot of people have passed the exam as well. So surrounding yourself in positive environments will allow for you to get more positive results because positive thoughts, positive vibes equal positive results. More negative vibes, negative thoughts equal more negative results. So surrounding yourself with people that are energized, pumped up, and building you up to allow for you to be the best possible version of yourself is super duper important. And like I said, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate every single one of you guys. Hope that you guys are feeling okay, exercising, self-care, and taking care of yourself in this process because if you're beating yourself up, dragging yourself down, and tearing yourself down, it's going to be very difficult for you to feel comfortable and confident when your back's against the wall in the actual exam. So rather than throwing your hands up in the feet like, what am I going to do? Throwing your hands up ready to fight because you guys have everything that you guys could possibly need. And I, I can't say it enough, man. You guys are so powerful, gifted, and talented that you guys don't even know what you're going to be able to do in this process because everything that you've gone through up to this point is what you were supposed to go through. And without what you've gone through, what you're supposed to do in the future would not be as sweet. So taking the lessons and growing along the way in the process is going to be super duper important. But let's get into the questions, guys. See how you guys do. Let's cut them up and let's tear it up. So let's get into it. So on the left-hand side is going to be the acronym box and the different types of questions. For those that don't know the acronym, it is safety, feelings, assess, refer, educate, advocate, facilitate, and intervene. And there are three types of questions that we can see. There are recall, application, and reasoning. So as we go through the different practice questions, I'll be identifying the different questions that are on this as well as if we can apply the acronym or not. So let's start with the first question. Question one. A social worker in a private practice has been working with a 27-year-old male for the past two months on ways to improve his relationship building skills. The man reported having a history of abuse in his childhood, and because of it, he finds it difficult to connect with others. The man reported that he's been trying to make new friends, but feels like everyone's going to leave him. What would be the best thing for the social worker to do to improve his relationship building skills? A. Connect the man with the peer support at the agency to help foster a positive relationship. B, work with the man to identify positive ways he can utilize to build relationships. Or C, um, provide the man a list of different trauma-related resources in the area. Or D, utilize role-playing with the man to help improve his ability to form relationships. So let's break down the question. So we are a social worker in a private practice. So that's who we are. We're working with a 27-year-old male. We've been doing this for the past two months. Any length of time, hop on top of it because it paints the picture of what we're looking at in the situation. And then he came in to improve his relationship building skills. So that's what he'd like to obtain out of services. The man reported having a history of abuse in his childhood. And because of it, he finds it difficult to connect with others. And the man reported that he's been trying to make new friends, but feels like everyone is going to leave him. And what would be the best thing for the social worker to do to help him improve his relationship building skills? So that is going to be the important part of how can we mobilize and help him get closer to having better relationship building skills. And I kind of forgot to say this at the beginning because I get it quite a bit, but I was almost about to forget it again. The highlighting colors don't really have a different meaning. The only distinction is yellow is super duper important or important in, and then the other colors are just to separate information because that's how my mind works and that's how other people's minds have worked as well. And this is going to be an application question. Why? Because it's a client scenario that we have to respond to in the best way that we know how. So let's apply the acronym here. Connect the man with the peer support at the agency to help foster a positive relationship, facilitate why? Because facilitate is where we connect them to another professional to supplement services, and the man would ultimately still be working with us. Work with a man to identify positive ways he can utilize to build the relationships. Intervene. Why? Because it's an action on our end to help mobilize and progress the therapeutic process in some way. And then provide a man a list of different trauma-related resources in the area. Educate. Why? Because it's us providing him information in the session that he'll ultimately utilize during the session. And then utilize role playing with the man to help him improve his ability to form relationships. Intervene. Why? Because it's an action on our end that we are doing to progress the therapeutic process in some way. So, quick review social worker, private practice, 27 year old male, two months, any length of time, hop on top of it because it paints the picture of what we're looking at. He came in to improve his relationship building skills. He has a history of 
abuse in his childhood, finds it difficult to connect with people now in the future, and he wants to find new friends, but feels like they're going to leave him. And now it's up to us to help him improve his ability to build relationships in the future. So keep that in mind as we go through the different answering choices. So right off the bat, we're going to rule out B because we're not going to directly work with the man on identifying positive ways he can utilize to build the relationships because even if we gave him the information, there's no guarantee that he would be doing this. Or if we came up with a plan, there's no guarantee that he would execute on the plan. So that would be ruled out. We'd also rule out C because C is way too fast. He did not say that he wanted to improve his trauma. He didn't say he wanted to process the trauma. He didn't say anything about the trauma besides I experienced this and now it's impacting my ability to improve relationships. So he's focused entirely on the relationships. And even though we as the social worker may find that trauma is important to work through, he may not find that same importance. So that is going to be ruled out. So now we're in between A, connect the man with the peer support at the agency to help foster a positive relationship, or D, utilize role playing with the man to help him improve his ability to form relationships. So this is where we have to make the decision. Do we want to connect him to another professional to establish a relationship? Because the peer support is somebody that has lived through mental health or substance use and now can help other people in that process? Or do we want to only role play what a relationship would look like? So for that reason, we're going to rule out D because D is, again, kind of creating that framework, same with B, of here's the things that you could possibly do to establish relationships. A is connecting them to another person to see them if they're able to foster a relationship in a positive manner. So the correct answer here is going to be A, connect the man with the peer support at the agency to help foster a positive relationship. And that's how we look at that question in particular. Let's move on to question two. Question two. A social worker at an outpatient clinic is working with a 45-year-old male and 50-year-old husband around issues that they've been having in their marriage. The 45-year-old man reports that he feels like his husband tries to dominate the relationship and then it makes him feel inadequate. The 45-year-old man reports that he would like to improve the relationship and the 50-year-old man states he does not mean to hurt his husband but that he's trying to prevent bad things from happening. And the 50-year-old man is open and willing to work on the relationship in therapy as well. What should the social worker do first to best help the couple? A, provide information to the couple on healthy relationship dynamics. B, inquire about previous relationships that each of the men have been in. C, work with the men to identify strengths and weaknesses in the relationship. Or D, connect the men to a relationship building group at the agency. So we are a social worker in an outpatient clinic. So that is who we are. We are working with a 45-year-old male and a 50-year-old husband. So his husband. So it is a couple and they are having issues in their marriage. So that's what brought them into services. So now the 45-year-old man, so that is one, so that's half of our client, reports that he feels like his husband tries to dominate the relationship and it makes him feel inadequate. So that is what the 45-year-old is feeling and he's open and willing to work on the relationship so he is in the action stage of change and then the 50 year old man so the husband in this situation states he does not mean to hurt his husband and he's just trying to prevent bad things from happening so he's not doing this out of malice he's just trying to do it out of concern and then he says he's also open and willing to discuss things and work on them in services this is going to be an application question. Why? Because it's a client scenario that we have to respond to in the best way that we know how. So let's apply the acronym to each of the answer choices, compare it back to the question to make sure that we're all on the same page. So A, provide information to the couple on healthy relationship dynamics. Why is that going to be educate? Because it's us providing information to them and that they're going to be utilizing in the session to help progress the therapeutic process in some way. B, inquire about previous relationships that each of the men have been in. Assess why, because we're collecting clinical data that can help us progress the therapeutic process. It's not gathering their perspective. It's simply asking like what relationships that they've been in. So that way we have a baseline of where they're both coming from, because what we do in the past often dictates what we do in the future. C, work with the men to identify strengths and weaknesses in the relationship. Intervene. Why? Because it's us working with them to progress the therapeutic process in some way. So it's an action on our end. And then connect the men to a relationship building group at the agency. 
intervene. Why? Because it's us doing the connection to help progress the therapeutic process in some way. So quick review, outpatient clinic, 45-year-old male, 50-year-old husband. So they're both married. Our client is the couple. They engage based on issues that they're having in their marriage. The 45-year-old man reports that his husband tries to dominate the relationship, makes him feel inadequate, and he's open and willing to work on improving the relationship. The 50-year-old man says, I don't mean to hurt you, but I'm trying to prevent bad things from happening. And he's also willing to work on the relationship and therapy. So keep that in mind as we go through the different answer choices. So right off the get-go, we're just not going to connect them to a group in some way, shape, or form because they didn't say they were interested in the group and we don't really know where they're at because we're just now meeting them. So we have to keep that in mind of where we're at and the length of time doesn't provide it so we can assume that this is an intake assessment. So we'd also rule out A because A is assuming that they need information on healthy relationship dynamics. That's too fast. That's us telling the clients where they need to go and we need to meet them where they're at in the situation. So now we're in between B and C. B, inquire about previous relationships that each of the men have been in. So that's going to give us a baseline of like, what did you guys experience in the past? So that way we can see is it impact in the future and the current situation. And then C, work with the men to identify strengths and weaknesses in the relationship. So that's us trying to tell them, what do you enjoy about the relationship? What do you dislike about the relationship? And now here we are. So we're going to rule out C here. Because identifying the strengths and weaknesses in the relationship is not really going to help guide treatment. It's just going to have them reflect on what do you guys like, what do you guys dislike, and where do you guys want to go when they already told us, we want to improve the relationship. I feel inadequate. I feel like this person's trying to dominate me and the other person's like, I'm not really trying to hurt you, but I'm trying to prevent bad things from happening. But they're not really communicating what are the bad things. So we're going to go with B because maybe the 50-year-old man has been through a relationship where bad things were happening all the time and they felt like they had to rescue or control or dictate the situation in order for things to be okay. And the 45-year-old man doesn't really understand why his husband's doing this. So understanding what happened in the past can help us change and mitigate future issues and then increase the level of communication within their situation. So the correct answer here is going to be B, inquire about previous relationships that each man have been in. So that's how we look at that question in particular. Question three. A social worker in a family agency is meeting with a couple and their 15-year-old son. The mother reports that her son will not listen to her and that she feels like he's out of control. The father reports that the son will listen to him and that he does not see any issues. The boy reports that his mother is overreacting and that she needs to come here, not all of us. What should the social worker do first in this situation? A, provide information on effective communication to the family to allow for them to prepare for therapy. B, utilize circular questioning to further explore the family's perspective. C, gather information regarding why the father and son do not feel like they need to come. Or D, identify what the family would like to work on while meeting with the social worker. So let's break down the question. We are a social worker and a family agency, so that's where we're at and who we are. We're meeting with a couple and a 15-year-old son. So those are our clients, every single person. The mother, so a third of what our client system is saying, is that her son is not listening to her and that he is out of control. So that is her perspective. And then the second person in the client system, the father reports that the son will listen to him. He does not see any issues. So he is not experiencing the same thing that the mother is. And then the last person in our client system says that, his mother is overreacting. She needs to come here, not all of us. So we're kind of all at a standstill of like, okay, not everyone's on the same page. And this is going to be an application question. Why? Because it's going to be a client scenario that we have to react to in the best way that we know how. So let's break down each of the answer choices, compare it back to the question to see what we're looking at in the situation. Provide information on an effective communication to the family to allow for them to prepare for therapy Educate, why? Because we're providing them information that they'll utilize in the session to better inform themselves and to provide informed consent. B, utilize circular questioning to further explore the family's perspective. Feelings, why? Because it's us understanding what each of the person's going through at this time. And just because it says utilizing an intervention technique does not mean that it doesn't intervene. You have to understand what the purpose of us delivering it is and then go from there. 
C, gather information regarding why the father and son do not feel like they need to come. Feelings, why? Because it's getting their direct perspective of what they're experiencing at this given moment. And then D, identify what the family would like to work on while meeting with the social worker. Assess why, because it's gathering clinical data of like, what would you guys like to do and how can we go further in this process? So keep that in mind. Quick review, family agency, couple, 15-year-old son. Mom says that the son's not listening to her. He's completely out of control. Father says, I'm not experiencing that and I don't see any issues in this situation. The boy has the same perspective as the father and says that the mom's overreacting. I don't really see why it, we need to come here. She's the one that needs to come here. So keep that in mind as we go look at the answer choices. So right off the get-go, we're going to rule out A because we're not just going to assume that they need effective communication skills at this given moment. That's us saying, well, you guys aren't effectively able to communicate, so we're obviously not accomplishing anything here. No one said anything about communication, so we're not going to assume and jump in and be like, yep, let me provide you something and everything's going to be great. That's not the presenting issue that they brought up, so we're not going to say that's what's going on with and for their situation. We're also going to rule out D, because D is assuming that they all want to work with us and only one third of the client system, the mother, wants to work with us at this time or from the sounds of it, that's what it is. So now we're looking at B, utilize circular questioning. Circular questioning is a technique that you would see in strategic family therapy where we explore every single person's perspective and see what are you experiencing? What are you experiencing? What is this other person experiencing without anyone interrupting? So that way I have a clear picture and everyone else understands everyone else's perspective as well. And C, gather information regarding why the father and son do not feel like they need to come. And this is where we have to be very, very poignant on who our clients are. So we are working with a couple and 15-year-old son and our answer is often going to contain our client system. And C is only focused on the father and son. So for that very reason, we would rule out C, even though it's a feelings and we may be like, well, the father and son need to be in treatment for some way or some reason. That's not always going to be the case because just because they showed up for services doesn't mean they're motivated. So we need to make sure who our client is or who our clients are before proceeding. So we're going to utilize B, include the entire family and the process of us being able to do this because we're not going to exclude or side with the mom and say, okay, why do you guys not feel like you need to come because you're obviously here for a reason? bad moves, bad vibes. The correct answer here is utilize circular questioning to further explore the family's perspective to see where they would like to go with and for their situation. So that's how we'd look at that question in particular. Question four. A social worker in an outpatient clinic is completing an intake assessment with a 13-year-old boy and his father. The boy presents to the intake around issues of bullying at a school. The boy reports that he feels like no one cares about him and that he does not have anywhere he can be himself. The boy starts to discuss that he feels like a woman and would like to pursue sex reassignment surgery. The father interrupts the boy and says, stop with the nonsense. Do not make me take this into my own hands. What should the social worker do next in this situation? A. Inform the father and the boy that has the right to discuss anything in session and urge the boy to continue sharing. B, inform the father that he would not be allowed to speak to the boy like that in the office and he can be removed. C, gather information around what the father meant regarding his comment and explore the boy's perspective. Or D, explore the boy's feelings regarding his father's comment and explore any previous abuse that he has experienced. So let's break down the question. We are a social worker in an outpatient clinic, so that's who we are. We're completing an intake assessment, so any length of time, hop on top of it because it paints the picture of what we're looking at. So it's our first time meeting a 13-year-old boy and his father, so they're both in the session. The boy reports, so that is going to be our primary client, regarding issues of bullying at the school, so keep that in mind. And now the boy is additionally telling us information that he feels like no one cares about him and that he does not feel like he can be himself anywhere. And then the boy starts to discuss he feels like a woman would like to pursue sex reassignment surgery. And the father, so the father is now involved in the situation. And he says, stop with the nonsense and do not make me take this into my own hands. So that's a direct quote from him. 
So what would be the next thing that we do in this situation? And this is going to be an application question. Why? Because it's a client scenario that we have to react to in the best way that we know how. So let's break down each answer choice utilizing the acronym, compare it back to the question to see what we're looking at at this given time. So A, inform the father that the boy has the right to discuss anything in session and urge the boy to continue sharing. Intervene. Why? Because it's us telling the father something to direct the therapeutic process in some way, shape, or form. B, inform the father that he would not be able to be allowed to speak to the boy like that in the office and he can be removed. Intervene. Why? Because it's us dictating the therapeutic process and interjecting and telling the father something. And it's also going to be kind of a bad move because why are we going to remove somebody out of the session? Because then we're going to have an angry father and then the boy is going to have to go home with the father. So keep in mind that's going to be a bad moves, bad vibes type answer. C, gather information around what the father meant regarding this comment and explore the boy's perspective. This one is going to be a safety feelings. A feelings, why? Because it's getting the boy's direct perspective. Safety, because there's an undertone of potential danger. And then D, explore the boy's feelings regarding his father's comment and explore any previous abuse that he has experienced. Safety feelings, again, why feelings? Because it's getting the boy's direct perspective of the comment. And then Potential abuse would be under safety as well, but we may have to look back at the question to see if there's anything potentially implemented or assuming that there would be abuse. So keep that in mind as we quick review outpatient clinic intake assessment. First time eating a 13-year-old boy. His father, the boy says, I was being bullied at school. He reports that no one cares about him and he does not feel like he can be himself anywhere. The boy starts to discuss how he feels like a woman and he would like to pursue a re sex reassignment surgery. Father interrupts the boy and says, stop with the nonsense. Do not make me take this into my own hands. So now we're at like a standstill. So what would we need to do to progress the process in some way, shape, or form? So right off the bat, we're going to rule out B because we're not going to tell the father that he's not allowed to speak to the boy that way and he can be removed. Because even if we do remove this guy, how's this boy going to get home? Or where's the boy going to live? So if the father's angry, we could potentially put the boy in more danger based on the fact that the father is now outside of the room. We're not really knowing what's going on with and for the situation. We're also going to rule out A, because A is jumping in too fast and telling the father, like, you're not going to be able to do this. The boy has every right to share whatever he wants. Keep your mouth quiet, pipe down. So now we're looking at C and D. C, gather information around what the father meant regarding his comment. And also D's explore the boy's feelings regarding the father's comment. So the answer choices are both the same at the beginning. So we're both gathering information around the comment. So now this is where the answer choices are trying to trick us. So now we have to look at what's coming afterwards. So do we want to explore the boy's perspective or do we want to explore any abuse that the boy could have experienced at this moment. So this is where it gets tricky because if you look back in the question, and that's why utilizing the question to get the answer is super duper important, it does not say that there's any implications of abuse or that there was past abuse or that the boy's afraid or anything like that. So for that reason, we're going to take out safety from D. It would just be a feelings and we're going to rule out D because we're not going to assume that there's any safety concerns in any way, shape, or form, because that's bad moves, bad vibes, because that's adding to the question. And when you add to the question, you take yourself out of the current question and current situation, and then you start reacting on things that are not present, which could lead to worse results than if you were to stay in the question, trust yourself, and stay with the answer choices. So the correct answer here is going to be C, gather information around what the father meant regarding his comment and explore the boy's perspective. Why are we going to do that? Because one, we need to figure out what the father meant by, I'm going to take this into my own hands. And then we're going to explore the boy's perspective of like, are you afraid? Has this happened before? Like what's going on? So that way we make sure he's stabilized and the father is very poignant about what he means with and for the situation. So that's how we'd look at that question in particular. Question five. A community-based social worker has been implementing a program to help reduce the rate of suicide in her community by establishing a community center that people can come to for support. The community center offers social activities, food, hygiene products, and mental health assistance. The program has been gaining new members and showing promising results. The social worker realizes that multiple members are a part of the LGBTQ community and the social worker feels an implicit bias towards them. 
would be the most likely thing for the social worker to do in this situation. A, ignore her bias and allow for the members to continue attending the facility. B, gather information around the community centers in the area to allow for the members to get services somewhere else. C, reach out to the other social workers in her area to understand how they handle bias that they have. Or D, leave the agency as the bias is getting in the way of the social worker helping some of the members. So let's break down the question. We are a community-based social worker, so we are focused on ampl amplifying things in the community or establishing programs. And, of course, we've been implementing a program for that exact reason. And the purpose of it is to help reduce the rates of suicide in her community. And we're doing so by establishing a community center that people can come to for support. So this is our own community center. So we own the community center. And the services that the community center offers is social activities, food, hygiene products, and mental health assistance. So it's providing an array of services. The program has been growing new members and showing promising results. So we are helping the community's rates of suicide go down. And then the social worker realizes there are people from the LGBTQ community. And now we have an implicit bias towards them. And what would be the most likely thing for the social worker to do in this situation? So this one is going to be a reasoning question as well as an application question. So it's an application reasoning question. And there are going to be some hybrid type questions. Why is it a hybrid question? It's an application question because it's a client scenario that we have to react to in the best way we know how. But it's also a reasoning because it has that ethical undertone of what does our ethics say around bias and how would we address and assess those particular things. So we're not going to be able to utilize the acronym here. So now we have to utilize the details in the question and compare it to the answers to see where we're at. So keep that in mind as we quick review community-based social worker implementing a program to help reduce the rates of suicide in our community. We established a community center. The community center is offering an array of services, social activities, food, hygiene products, and mental health assistance. It's growing new members. It's becoming super successful like every program that we want to see. And now we notice that we have multiple members from the LGBTQ community coming, and we have an implicit bias. Key emphasis on implicit, because that is going to be important on how we answer the question. So keep that in mind, and let's go back to the answer choices to see what we're doing. So right off the bat, we're going to rule out D. Why? Because we own the community center. We're not just going to leave a program that we established in some way, shape, or form, and we're not just going to be like, all right, see you guys later, because then they're going to be like, wait, what? We're shutting down the community center when it's showing promising results and all of these things. So bad moves, bad vibes. We're also going to rule out B. So we're not just going to start gathering information around other community centers that people can utilize. Because why are we going to make our community center less successful based on our own opinions and things that we're bringing into it, not things that the client have said about our community center. So that's where we have to keep things in mind and keep ourselves relevant and focused in the situation. So now we're looking at A, ignore bias and allow for the members to continue to attend the facility, or C, reach out to other social workers in our area to understand how they handle biases that they have. And this is where we have to go back to the question. So it's an implicit bias, and implicit means inside, explicit means external. So we have done no actions or done nothing towards these members, so they don't even know that we're experiencing this at this given moment. And are we going to reach out to people to see how they've handled their bias in general? Or do we want to more focus on what we can do to help mobilize and improve the client situation? So for that direct reason, we're going to rule out C because it doesn't say seek supervision or seek out assistance from people that help people get over implicit bias around LGBTQ community. Because when it's an implicit bias, it may be something that we've experienced in the past. We're not going to allow things that we bring into the situation to deter client success. And this may not be something that we can talk to just anybody with and say, hey, this is what I feel about this group of people and this is what I'm going through. Because not everybody is going to actually be able to help you walk through that process, especially if they don't have the same experience or exposure to that situation. So the correct answer here is going to be A, Ignore her bias and allow for members to continue to attend the facility because it's not things that they're bringing in that would make us want to remove them. It's our own thing. And when we bring things into the therapeutic process or social work process, we need to be deter and actually focus on our own selves. And we may need to seek supervision. We may need to seek therapy services, etc. to make sure we're not 
causing any harm to anybody in any way, shape, or form based on things that we bring in, countertransference, if you will, because it's counter to the therapeutic process. So that's how we look at that question in particular. Hopefully you guys found the questions video very, very helpful. If you did, hit the thumbs up button down below. It really, really helps me out. It helps other people find the videos. Subscribe to my YouTube channel down below as well. If you haven't already, click the bell next to it. You'll get a notification and email every time that I upload it. Drop a comment down below if you're excited that this is a questions video or a positive thing for somebody to read because more people read the comments than you think. Take care of you guys yourself. Be safe. And from the bottom of my heart, I really, 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 really appreciate every single pre person rocking with me. Take care of you guys yourself. I'll see you guys in the next video. If you need anything, reach out to me. But until then, peace out, guys.